Call Saul Season 2. So the second season of Better Call Saul has Jimmy finally reaching the professional field, like the highest as it gets, as he takes a job at the law firm of Davis and Maine, working with uh, Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill on the Sandpiper Senior Center case. However, in this professional setting, he feels constrained because he's the kind of guy that likes to cut corners with the law. He likes to pretty much manipulate things lie his way out of things, do whatever it takes to get his client out of a sticky situation. That kind of thinking doesn't go over well, and he's starting to see that and reevaluate his life upon that. Kim Wexler, played by Rhea Seaborn, is also kind of reevaluating her career as things take a turn for her at Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill, and she has to rethink what she wants to do in her career as a lawyer. It's more interesting than it sounds. It's only because I'm not I'm trying not to spoil things. Mike finds himself tangled up with the Salamanca family and all of their criminal activities. He's not taking part in them. He's merely overseeing them. His involvement is definitely special thanks to Nacho. Uh, played by Michael Mondo, who gets promoted to the main cast this season, which is a little strange in my opinion, considering I feel like we don't see him too much this season, so I don't know why he got promoted to the main cast, but maybe he plays a bigger role as the series goes on. One interesting thing I noticed is that there are only two episodes this season that were written by uh, series co-creators uh, Peter Gould and Vince Gilligan. Those two episodes they each also directed, uh, and those two episodes were the last two episodes of this 10-episode season. Episode 19, Nailed, which was written and directed by Gould, and episode 20, Clank, which was co-written by Gilligan along with fellow writer Heather Marion. So he didn't even write the full episode. He had to have someone else help him. But he directed that one. All the other ones were written by uh, Jennifer Hutchinson, Gordon Smith, a uh, few others. One interesting addition for this season is writer Thomas Schnaz, who's written for Breaking Bad before and joined in on this season, and even wrote and directed the penultimate episode of the first season, Pimento, which is the the ninth episode of that ten episode first season, he got promoted to executive producer status. And he got to direct the season two premiere, which is a little unusual. Usually the co the creator or creators of a series will write the first episode and they'll write the last episode of a season and maybe a couple in between. But considering that he got to open up the season, written and directed by him, uh, makes me wonder if his promotion means like he also has a lot of influence in the series. Maybe not quite showrunner status. I don't think there'd be a need for that, but him getting promoted to an executive producer and opening up the season of the series just feels very symbolic of Thomas Schnaz is getting a lot of influence on the series. You may not care about that sort of thing. I do. I find that sort of thing kind of interesting. It's always interesting to figure out, you know, who's influencing the show. Like, what writer's names do you keep seeing? How big is this writing staff anyway? That kind of thing. Wanted to point out that Rhea Seaborn definitely should deserve an Emmy nomination. She deserves an Emmy nomination for supporting actress for her role in this series. Her role in this series got elevated as we started seeing more episodes centered on her, more acting moments from her, and we got to see more of what she could do. And we got to see more of her character. And she is a pretty interesting character, enough so to the point where I hope she doesn't come out of this series scathed. Like, I hope her life doesn't get ruined by the end of the series because, like, she has a lot going for her. And I would say, ultimately, she's kind of the foil for Jimmy. I mean, they are friends. Well, they're clearly more than that. They, they really don't know what to call themselves. It's sort of been implied that they're friends with benefits, even though they have deep affection for one another. But it's not played as, like, the, the typical lovey-dovey ro romance or anything like that. It's a little more complex than that. If anything, what can be simply stated is that these two characters are really close. But these two characters are, are kind of like opposites. Despite them being close to one another, they're opposites. You know, she is more, let's do things by the book. And she criticizes Jimmy at times for doing things off the book. Breaking the rules, that kind of thing. But she also accepts that that's how he does things. She knows that's what he does. 
And she understands that, even though that's not what she does herself. She's the opposite. Really, really uh, great to see that character elevated. Uh, really great to see they did more things with her. This series also explored the now troubled relationship between Jimmy and his brother Chuck. Chuck, of course, gets an elevated role this season as he starts taking a more active role at HHM again. However, it's it's costing him due to his mental disability that makes him think he is prone to illness via electric exposure, exposure to electrical items. I will say that the way this second season ended felt very underwhelming. It felt simply like an ending to just another episode of the series. It ended on a note of cliffhanger. It, it was one of those things where I, I had to step back and say, oh wait, that's it. <laughs> I have to wait a whole other year for the next one. Which, by the way, the next season, there is a third season coming that has been uh, confirmed by AMC. I just have to wait a whole year for that to happen. It didn't feel impactful enough to warrant that. Granted, this is also a very character-driven show. It is not an event-driven show. It is not action-driven. And there are some little implications about the way the season ends uh, that makes me... You know, okay, this, this is this is gonna something. You can tell by the way I'm I'm talking about this that like yeah, it didn't impact me all that much. But it comes to demonstrate another thing. Uh, as I'm sure most of the viewers of the show are probably Breaking Bad fans, people have seen Breaking Bad, including myself. This series is definitely taking its time establishing Saul. It doesn't want to turn Jimmy into Saul right away. It wants to. Take its time. Let the Jimmy character flesh out more. And this season, it started to show. Started to. It didn't hurt the series, but you could tell that they were taking their time. They were biding their time with this. Which, I understand why they're doing that. First of all, you know, they probably want to keep the show, show going as long as they can, and they want to see how much they can do before he has to go through that transition. However, they can't keep him Jimmy for long. They eventually have to turn him to Saul. And I feel like if I was writing the show, I would say like the end of season three would probably be a good ploy place to have that transition. And then after that, we could see him being Saul Goodman, attorney of law, him realizing, you know, criminals, criminal law <laughs> is my specialty. Plus another thing, the season premiere of season two, like the first season's first episode had a flash forward sequence in the beginning a uh, scene shot in black and white that shows jimmy in the future working at the cinnabon after the events of breaking bad and of course you have to wonder where is this going like is this something in the end of the series in which we'll we'll see future saul goodman i don't know do something to redeem himself do something that ties everything from the beginning uh, all the way to the end after Breaking Bad or something like that. I'd like to think that Vince Gilligan and Gould and Schnoz and the writers are smart enough to know where this is going. And I'll trust them to that. I just hope they don't take too much time with it. Don't get me wrong, it was a great season. Uh, and it had a lot of interesting things going on. And it just shows that it is truly very original. It's a, it's a show about a lawyer, but it's not your typical show about a lawyer. It's not a lawyer show. It's something else. It's, some, it's kind of a hybrid of things, which is, you know, fascinating. Makes this very fascinating to watch. And I get that they're taking their time getting to the logical, the first logical conclusion. The conclusion that the Breaking Bad fans are anticipating. I just hope it doesn't take too long to get there. But I'm sure when they do get there, it will be quite a great episode to see. It will be quite a cheer-worthy experience. Thanks for watching my review of Better Call Saul Season 2, and I will see you next time.